So this week we are talking about writing CBM. Now this has traditionally been made up of short, simple measures of students' writing skills. It requires a student to write for three minutes on an instructional level story starter. Then, as the teacher, we grade the response or score the response using multiple metrics. The most common one is total written words, but we also look at uh, words spelled correctly and correct writing sequences or sometimes even a uh, total number of letters. Now the CBM writing probes are really simple to administer and we get lots of different scoring options so that's one of the reasons we like them. Similar to spelling and later math, which we'll talk about next week, the writing probes can be given individually to a single student that you're working with or to a whole group of students all at one time. What you'll do is have a piece of lined paper like you see here and it'll have a story starter sentence or a partial sentence at the top or maybe even some choices and then the student gets to think for one minute about a possible story from the starter and then spends three minutes writing the story. You then collect the writing sample and score them. So just like our other CBM measures, the first time we do a writing CBM, we have three equivalent story starters that are going to be used. It doesn't matter whether you are doing a universal screening or if you're doing progress monitoring. We give all three in the same session. It's recommended that you do it in one session to save setup time and to get a more accurate score. We're going to take the median score of the three samples. That's what we're going to use for our first data point on the student's graph. And then after that, you want to gather 20 to 30 different but equivalent story starters that you can use to monitor the student's progress throughout the year in writing. Just like in the spelling CBM and all other CBMs, we standardize the directions. So you start by giving students a piece of lined paper and a pencil. You select some appropriate story starters and then you say, today I want you to write a story. I'm going to read a sentence to you first and then I want you to compose a short story about what happens. You will have one minute to think about what you will write and three minutes to write your story. Remember to do your best work. If you do not know how to spell a word, you should guess. Are there any questions? And then you should pause to see if students have any questions and answer them if they have them and then say, put your pencils down and listen. For the next minute, think about, and then you will read your story starter. After reading the story starter, begin your stopwatch and allow one minute for the students to think. Monitor students so that they do not begin writing yet. After 30 seconds, say, you should be thinking about, insert your story starter. At the end of one minute, restart your stopwatch for three minutes and say, now begin writing. Monitor students' attention to task. Encourage the students to work if they're not writing. After 90 seconds, you can say, you should be writing about, and then insert your story starter. At the end of three minutes, say, thank you, put your pencils down. Now you have several options when it comes to scoring the CBM writing probes. You can score student samples according to the number of words written, the number of letters written, the number of words correctly spelled, the number of writing units placed in correct sequence. Scoring methods differ in both the amount of time it takes you to score the probes and in the quality of the information that they provide about a student's writing skills. Let's look at an example together. This one is for total words. We've got a sixth grade sample here. For total words, we simply count up and record the total number of words written during the three-minute probe. Misspelled words are included in the tally, but numbers that are written in numeral form, like a 5 or a 17, are not counted. Calculating total words is the quickest of the scoring methods. A drawback, however, is that it only gives us a rough estimate of writing fluency. That is how quickly students can put words on paper. It doesn't let us examine the accuracy of spelling, punctuation, or any other writing conventions. We can also score for total letters. With this, we count up the total letters written during the three-minute probe. Again, misspelled words are included in the count, but numbers written in numeral form we exclude. We calculate the total, total letters uh, It's just by counting them. It's a reasonably quick operation. When we compare it to the word total, we also get the advantage of being able to control for words of varying length. For example, if you have a student who doesn't write very many words, but whose written vocabulary words tend toward longer words, then they might get a pretty low score on a word total, but they might get a substantially higher score for letter total. So 
as with word total, the letter total formula only gives us a general idea of writing fluency. It doesn't let us understand the student's mastery of any writing conventions. When we score according to total letters, looking at this sample, our writing sample has 154 letters. Let's look at correctly spelled words. When we look for correctly spelled words, we simply count only the words in the writing sample that are spelled correctly. Words are considered separately and not within the context of a sentence. So when you're scoring a word using this approach, the rule to follow is if in isolation the word represents a correctly spelled term in English, then the word is included in the tally. Assessing the number of correctly spelled words has the advantage of being relatively quick. It also examines the student's spelling accuracy. It allows us to, uh, to some degree to evaluate a student's mastery of written language. If we look at this sample, our writing sample contains 39 correctly spelled words. There are some additional rules that go with words spelled correctly. Capital letters must be used appropriately for a proper noun unless the noun can also be a common noun. For instance, she sat with Bill. We're going to count four words spelled correctly here because even though Bill should be capitalized here, it also can be a regular common noun. Reversals are not allowed. For instance, there was a dad storm instead of a bad storm where they reversed the B and the D. That does not count, so in this word we have four words spelled correctly. And contractions must have the apostrophe to be counted as correctly spelled. With correct word or correct writing sequence, what we're looking for is a sequence of at least two adjacent writing units. This could be words or punctuation. And that they we want them to be correct within the context of what's written. So it needs to be spelled correctly, have correct capitalization and punctuation except for commas. It needs to be semantically correct and syntactically correct. To get credit, the writing sequences have to be correctly spelled and grammatically correct. The words in each writing sequ sequence must also make sense within the context of the sentence. In effect, the student's writing is judged according to standards of informal standard American English. A caret is used to mark the presence of a correct writing sequence. Since the first word is correct, it's marked as a correct writing sequence. Because the period is considered essential punch punctuation, it's joined with the words before and after to make two correct writing sequences. Grammatical or syntactical errors, as you can see here, are not counted, and misspelled words are not counted either. Let's try again with this sentence. An elephant lives on a farm. We've got six total words written as we count them this way, and if we circle our incorrectly spelled words, we come up with three correctly spelled words. If we look for our correct word sequences, because they have to have uh, correct syntax, spelling, and grammar, we end up with two correct word sequences. In this sentence, we can count, uh, since is is correct, that, a, red, car. Each of those words is correctly spelled. The syntax is correct, so we start with the caret here before is and connect each correct uh, word sequence for a correct word sequence total of six. Remember, necessary marks of punctuation, excluding commas, are included in the correct writing sequence. And syntactically correct words are what make up the sequence. So, in this example, all the words are real words and they're spelled correctly, but the syntax isn't correct, so it doesn't count. It has to be semantically correct as well. Here, it still says, is that a red car, but it's not semantically correct, so it doesn't count. If it's correct, the initial word of a writing sample is counted as a correct writing sequence. Titles are included in the correct writing sequence count as well. With the exception of dates, numbers that are written in numeral form are not included in the correct writing sequence count. Now, not surprisingly, evaluating writing probes according to the correct writing sequence is the most time-consuming of the scoring methods, but it's also the scoring approach that gives us the most comprehensive information about a student's writing competencies. So let's do some practice. So we have this writing sample. So let's look for our correct words. First of all, we've got five correct word sequences here. We start with I because it's an initial correct. And then because wood is incorrect, it doesn't count as part of the sequence. Drink is correct and water is correctly spelled and semantically and grammatically correct. So that counts water and from. We get a carrot between there, from to the ocean and the to the ocean. 
That gives us 5. So let's look at the next line. You should have come up with 6 correct word sequences. Look at the third line. You should have come up with 5 correct word sequences. Notice that from trees to then, we get two correct word sequences because of that period. Essential punctuation counts as part of the correct word sequence. Let's look at the next line. You should come up with six again. While a missing comma wouldn't count against the student, using it correctly counts for the student here. The next line, we also come up with six, and I'll point out again that essential punctuation gives us two. Uh, the period at the end gives us two correct word sequences. And the next line, we get six again. And in the last line, we get three. We get preceding spare, between spare and time, and time to the period. So our correct word sequence for this passage is 37. Let's try again. Uh, we've got all of the kids started to laugh. The monkey was silly. Let me move that up for you just a little bit so we can see it. Uh, we have two samples here. And I've got it marked out for you here correctly as well. 13 correct word sequences are possible. And you should do this one on your own and count that up. All right, here's a third grade example. And I'm going to put these in our pilot shell for you to look at independently. All right, go back to page 105 and 106 in your text. Remember when you're scoring, you should underline each word that's been written regardless of, it's how, regardless of how it's spelled when you are counting total words written. That's how you count them. A word is defined as any group of letters, including misspelled words or nonsense words, as long as they have a space after them. See 105 for that. The special rule is for hyphenated words. They're only individual words if the individual parts can stand alone. So if you've got the word re-evaluated and there's a hyphen between re and evaluated, it only counts as one because re can't stand on its own. But the word mother-in-law counts as three words because mother, in, and law can all stand separately. Numerals are not counted as words unless they're written as words, like the number six is written S-I-X. That would count as a word. The exception would be currency and dates. And any unusual characters like a pound sign or a hashtag or the ampersand or the and sign, those do not count as words. I want to give you the opportunity for some additional practice, a grade boost opportunity, otherwise known as extra credit. I don't usually give extra credit uh, because there are plenty of credit opportunities, but I want to give you this opportunity to improve your grade through practicing your skills. If you administer a CBM, I want you to create a screencast or a video like what I've done for you explaining how you score it and then share it on the discussion board. That's in this week's uh, pilot show. If you do that, uh, then you can get some extra credit. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to uh, give us the format. You're going to you know, show us the screen. You can generate them yourself from interventioncentral.org, and I've got it linked for you here. Uh, you can use a story starter, and you can score total words written, total letters, words spelled correctly, and correct word sequences. If you have a fully correct demonstration of scoring, uh, of all four of those scores, I'll offer you one of these two choices. You can replace your one of your reflection grades, which are usually 30 points, with a full credit score. If you do this video and it's fully correct demonstration of all four scoring methods, you can replace any one of your reflections with a, with a full credit score. Or if you don't want to replace a full credit score, I'll let you choose to add a 10 point bonus to your running total, okay? The video must be viewable, so uh, my suggestion is that you put it on YouTube and that you upload it as an unlisted video so that it's not necessarily searchable if you don't want it searchable, but so that the link works for us, that we can see it. Uh, it must be viewable and it must be posted by April 11th. That's actually 10 days from today, which is Thursday. You must correctly demonstrate all four scoring areas. Uh, to do that. Okay, so if that sounds like something you would like to do, good luck. And uh, I recommend that you practice doing it anyway, because we are having a final exam in this class. And that is the kind of thing that would show up on your final exam, a demonstration of scoring. Okay, so go ahead and practice it either way. But if you want an opportunity for some extra credit, then just upload a video of you demonstrating your scoring explanation on YouTube in our discussion board.